Good afternoon. This is the Sandusky Register Norwalk Reflector Huron County Commissioner Day debate between incumbent Terry Boos and challenger Melissa James. We're going to meet the candidates in just a few moments, but before we do, I want to mention that the debate format is each candidate will have a one minute opening introduction. Each candidate will get one minute to answer each question and each candidate will get th up to 30 seconds to refute, or, uh, to refute their opponent's question. I want to mention that this debate is brought to you by um, Bowling Green State University Firelands College as a public service. And we appreciate the sponsorship of Firelands College and the support for this program. Is that what you were meaning? I also want to mention that Aaron Caldwell is producing this debate along with reporters Brandon Adio and Lynn Ann Vukovic, uh, Brandon from the Snusky Register, and Lynn Ann Vukovic from the Norwalk Reflector. And with that, we'll meet our candidates. On my immediate left is incumbent Jerry Boos, uh, and to my right, I guess, is the challenger, Melissa James. And we talked before we got started, and I think the incumbent leads out with the opening statement. Commissioner yes. Boos. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you, BGSU Firelands and the Sandusky Register for hosting this. It's always great when we get an opportunity um, for people to hear us, especially in this COVID-19 uh, situation that we're in. I am Terry Boos, your current Huron County Commissioner. I'm also your past state representative, and I'm also a past fiscal officer for Norwalk Township. Um, I'm married uh, for about 37 years with my wife, Mary Lisa. We have four kids, and um, they are all out of the nest at this time. And uh, I also now have six grandchildren, and um, I have grown up in Norwalk, uh, rural Norwalk, and lived in the area all but four years of my life when I went away to get an MBA, and, work part-time for a uh, public consulting firm. So um, that, that'll do it, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Boos and candidate James. Thank you, and I, I too want to appreciate BGSU's uh, generosity for this, along with the reflector and register for um, stepping out and doing it. It's an important part of our electoral process. Um, I moved to Huron County 20 years ago. I've been an executive director of the Huron County Chamber of Commerce for 16 of those years. Um, the reason I'm running, and I think it's an important reason, uh, I went to the commissioners for help with a business uh, several years ago that was being courted to move out of our county and asked for help. And at the end of the day, I got a, we support them, but what do you want us to do? That was the first time. I went back another time for another business. I got the same response. My dad had an eighth grade education, but he learned enough to know that when you saw somebody needing help or somebody asked for help, you needed to step up. So this is my time to step up, and that's what I'm doing for our county. Thank you, candidate James. And we'll start with uh, questions from our reporters. And Brandon, do you want to lead us out? Thank you, Matt. Uh, for both candidates, what are your plans for economic development and growing the local economy? And we'll start with you, candidate James. I want to take all of the efforts in Huron County, which are very fractured right now. We have lots of different organizations attempting to do economic development, and I want to put them together. This can be done, it needs to be done, so that our whole county benefits. Um, and then I want to properly fund them. Um, currently, there's less than uh, $50,000 going to the countywide effort from the commissioners, and um, we, we need to turn that around. We need to properly fund. We need to put everybody under one roof so that they are working together as a team. In the current situation, we've actually discouraged them from working together, and that's just not okay. We have to come together as a team. We have great people in various organizations throughout the county. Now, also recently in doing that, the commissioners have funded uh, Firelands Forward for $50,000, which is more than they've done for our whole county. And um, I think our tax money needs to stay in making our own programs better for the betterment of our whole county. 
Thank you, Kenny. James, uh, Commissioner Moose. Yeah, thank you very much for that very important question. Um, you know, uh, I 50% uh, I, I agree with my opponent, and that's because I think she saw what we were trying to do. Back in February, we had the exact meeting to do exactly what she said we were going to do, and, and that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, COVID kind of put a halt on that. We couldn't uh, proceed with the plans that came out of the February meeting. And in that February meeting, we were trying to do, uh, make sure that everybody was working together instead of apart like they are today. But what I'm most proud is our uh, commitment to Firelands Forward. Firelands Forward isn't an Erie County program. It's a normal, it's a Huron County, Erie County program that the businesses from both counties worked together and said, you know what? There are no borders for jobs. We need to work together, and that's what we decided to do. Thank you, Commissioner Boos. And we'll move on to our next question, Lynn Ann Vukovic. What is being a county commissioner a full-time job? Why or why not? Please explain. And we'll start with you, Commissioner Boos. Is it a full-time job? Well, uh, being a county commissioner is more than a full-time job. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, a good example I can give you um, was when I was a state representative, which was the also same thing, I went on a vacation and sure enough a derailment happened in Willard Yard. I spent almost that whole vacation talking back and forth. Now what does that mean though it's a full-time job? You know there's always always things going on in your life and um, I've never worked 40 hours in my life. I grew up on a farm. We worked 70, 80 hours a week. And I'm a firm believer that you just need to work until the work's done. Luckily, I've been able to also work part-time as a controller for uh, Norwalk Concrete. And my boss there always says, put your government position first and do what you need to do. And he's always let me do that. So there's no problem uh, accomplishing as long as you're willing to put in the time. Is that a full-time job? It's a 24-7. Uh, the, the other job that you have? No, that is a part-time job. Okay. And I think candidate James? Um, it's, as Mr. Booth says, it is a full-time job. Uh, but it's a full-time job not on Tuesday and every other Thursday. It's a full-time job all the time with not being in the office, not making people come to you, but being out. And that's one of the things you'll find that when I'm commissioner, I will not be holed up in my office. Um, I have my phone number and my email all over the county, and that will continue. You will always have access to me no matter what. Um, I will not hold any other job. In fact, that's the reason I left the chamber is because I had intended to run, um, and I did previously run for commissioner. Um, and I did not think that the people ought to pay for a governmental position who's also got another job making other money, I think you need to be dedicated, fully focused, and fully available. And that is what I will do as commissioner. All right. Thank you, candidate James. And we'll move on to our next question from reporter Brandon Adio. What, in your view, are the top three responsibilities of a county commissioner? And candidate James, we'll start with you. Well, you can go with the technical, and that's buildings and budgets. Um, but I think the... Uh, truly top concerns of a candidate should be the people and how you're, you're handling their money and their concerns and their issues. It should be the businesses and again how you're handling and helping them grow and prosper for the good of your community. Obviously buildings and budgets are always important. Budgets are, are critical and they should be transparent. They should be easily accessible um, and commissioners themselves need to be um, open and available that's I think one of the top things the top priorities of any candidate should be that you are always out there um, and I intend to be in township and city meetings not to control or to interfere but to help with the conduit of information so that people know what's going on in our county and our county knows what's going on in our various small communities so that we can all act as one community Thank you, candidate Melissa James. And we'll move to uh, Commissioner Terry Boos. Yeah, um, there's probably more than three, but you always have to start with budget, budget, budget. And that's what it's all about. That's what's figuring out what you need to do. The number one job 
that you will learn whether you go to uh, to any uh, county commissioner association meetings or wherever they talk about number one is budget and budget is something that I have worked on I've worked on approximately 11 budgets now for the county I've worked on four budgets at the uh, um, state level as well as a fiscal officer I did it there but you don't know what you need until you look at the budget and figure it out. Working with businesses is obviously most important. You will see in the COVID money that we have right now, we are spending a large part of our money giving it to businesses because businesses is what counts. And lastly and not leastly is working with all the other boards that there are in the county. And I think we've done an extremely good job of that in the last three years. Thank you, Commissioner Boos. And we'll move on to the next question, which I believe comes from Lynn Ann. Census data shows oh. more than 10% of Huron County's population lives in poverty. How do you plan to address this problem? And we'll start with you, Commissioner Boos. Sure. If you would uh, see the number of dollars that we spend out at Job and Family Services, that is, it's an unbelievable amount of money that we spend millions upon millions of dollars helping those people. And our Job and Family Services does a great job. They are there to make sure that they can uh, give them as much as they can and help them any way they can. Along with that is working with senior uh, or enrichment services, which is now called the veteran services, working with them to make sure that they can use the majority of their money for services and don't have to do it administratively. And in COVID, we've really been helping the other agencies around in Huron County so that they don't have to do that. And last but not least, jobs, jobs, jobs. And that goes back to Firelands Forward. Thank you, Commissioner. And we'll move on to the next question. Or uh, you need to answer that. <laughs> Sorry I would that. appreciate that. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. How do I plan to address our extreme poverty and we really are uh, in, a, in a world of hurt. We need to do several things. We need to help better educate our people, including our families. We need to help um, eliminate the food desert that exists. We have children who are hungry because they're not in school and we can do that by helping families learn to uh, grow some of their own food, um, help them get better access to the programs and one of the things that I've talked to several of our organizations about is um, how do they go through the pipeline of getting the help they need? How do they find it? And that's one of the things I want to do um, through the um, website of the county is make that pipeline, that conduit to information accessible to everybody. Um, and they've got to be able to have the education, the food, the shelter, and our organizations can do that by working thoroughly with one another and helping to bring those solutions out where people can get a hold of them. All right. Thank you for that answer. And I think we're going to this way. Uh, this is the Norwalk Reflectors and Dusky Registered Debate, Huron County Commissioner's Race Debate. This is one of five debates being brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service. And we want to thank BGSU Firelands College for assisting us in this endeavor. I also want to mention that this debate is being held at safe distances with masks. Uh, there is no audience. And so these are running by in a clip, we've noticed. So, But everybody is safe distance. We had another debate scheduled today, which unfortunately had to be postponed. The fourth district debate between Jim Jordan and Shannon Freshour. We're looking to reschedule that debate even as we speak. With that, we're going to move on to our next question. And this one is from reporter Brandon Adio. What are your views on the county's current budget? Is there somewhere in need of additional funding? And is there anything that should be, or shouldn't be cut? And we'll start with Melissa James. I am glad that you're asking about budget because I think there are some severe issues in our budget. One of, the, one of the severe issues we're having is an ongoing uh, lawsuit between Huron County and Erie County Commissioners over the transfer station, or what some people would call a landfill. Um, to date, 
our, our commissioners have spent nearly $150,000 on legal fees to an outside firm. And when it got close to that 150 that they budgeted, those fees are now being put down into miscellaneous. So I think one of the things we need to do right away is to up the transparency of this budget. There are some things that need to be cut. There are other things that need to be increased with their funding. Edu um, economic development is one of the things we need to be investing heavily right in our own community. Um, uh, I have no issue with collaboration. We have always collaborated, uh, but you don't take the tax money and send it elsewhere and then call it collaboration because it won't happen in the manner that the difference between $100,000 invested directly in your own community of your tax dollars versus less than 50 uh, is a huge difference and we need to, to be doing that for our own programs. Thank you, candidate James. And uh, Commissioner Boos. Yes, um, you know, thank you for bringing up economic development and need to spend. We've more than doubled what we're paying in economic development than any of our uh, past previous commissioners have. And uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that we've doubled that. But our budget's in excellent shape. We've done a great job with our budget. Uh, for three consecutive years that I've been in uh, part of this budget, we have rolled over uh, close to five million dollars, between four and five million dollars every year. That's about 20 percent of the budget and we do that because of the great working relationship that we have with everybody, whether it's elected officials, whether it's other departments, whether it's our department heads, we're in great shape. We're not going to be coming out of COVID like the shape that Erie County's in or the city of Norwalk in because we've done a fantastic job. And we'll move on to the next question uh, from reporter Brandon, uh, from reporter Lydian Hukovic. <laughs> um, in your view, what are the most pressing issues in the county, and what will you do to address those issues? And we'll go with you, Commissioner Boos. What are the most pressing issues in the county, and what will you do to address those issues? Well, uh, obviously, right now, one of the most important pressing issues is COVID-19 and what is it going to do to us and how do we spend the three million dollars that we just got from uh, the federal government and uh, but it has to be spent by the end of the year. Most counties are taking that money and replacing salaries out of the current uh, budget that um, the Treasury said you can do. We're using our money to pay for COVID expenses. We're using it for personal protective equipment. We're using it to help other businesses. We've offered it to the fair board uh, on top of their 50,000. We've offered it to the libraries. We've offered it to all the cities and villages. Let us help you and most especially businesses. Once again, we're giving more of our COVID money to businesses than any other county in the area. Will you spend all of that money before the end of the year? Um, we probably will because the simple fact that we can spend it on salaries from the sheriff's office and that's a million dollars alone, but that's going to be the last thing we do. If we can help everybody else first, we're going to help everybody. Very good. And Melissa James, candidate James, you're... Obviously COVID is, is on the top of all of our minds right now, but the really hardest impact of COVID, I believe, will be next year. Uh, when you start seeing differences in revenues, um, the, the long-term impact on some of our smaller mom-and-pop businesses, um, it, it's already devastated some of them, but it will, it will wipe out quite a few more. We're going to have a lot of work to do in economic development. We've got to find a different way to do it as, as opposed to what we've traditionally done of, of being sitting side by side and walking somebody through literally hand in hand. So um, I, would, I would look at making sure that we're holding on to budgets. How do we do it? How do we make sure to help? Um, that we're promoting economic development in ways that we're not considering. Uh, part of that, um, one of the main things I see is also that we have to do something about our broadband in the rural areas. And while there is a program that's supposed to be going on, it, it's slower than molasses. And it, you know, I've got, I've got a kid at remote learning right now, and my, we have troubles out in the country. We're on a farm, and we've got troubles to get good quality 
silent internet. And so we have got to move those forward. And that will, in the long term, help our business and our county, our people, move forward with better education and better jobs. Thank you for that answer. And we'll move on to our next question from reporter Brandon Adio. What three steps would you take to improve the county's financial situation? Well, the first thing you have to do... Yes, please okay. go. Okay, the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you have a good budget and a budget that you can count on for the next two, three, four years. And so what we did is when we, start, when we started out three years ago with the budget, and that was the very first, obviously the biggest thing that we had to do in the first three months. What we did is we broke it down. We broke it down as to what are the absolute needs or have-tos that you have to do. The second part we did is something that hadn't been done in a long time, and that is to put together a long-term capital plan so that you know capital expenditures shouldn't just happen. They should be planned. And we did that, and we've got a plan, and we started that plan, and we've been going by that plan all along. And then, of course, the third thing is to do uh, look at the major needs that haven't been done in the past that you need to get started and change things, like having an IT department, which is something we've been working on for three years now. Thank you, and I think it goes to you, ma'am. Um, to improve the financial uh, condition of our budget, um, I'd like to start with some of making sure our priorities are intact. Currently, we have some admin folks who are making $30 up to $42 an hour, and we have over-the-road deputies making an average of $23 and some change. I think we have our priorities uh, wrong, but we've recently spent $47,000 of your tax money to negotiate a dollar something an hour raise for those deputies. I think we have our priorities wrong, and I think we need to straighten up our priorities in order to straighten up our financial situation. No, we're not in a bad spot right now. We currently have about $7 million um, in the bank. We've got another half million in uh, permanent improvements we could access. There's another million sitting around um, from a Medicaid tax that hasn't been touched, which I applaud the commissioners for that. But I think if we reprioritize some of our budgets that um, we literally could be in a much stronger driving seat than what we are right now. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. This is the Huron County Commissioner's Debate brought to you by the Norwalk Reflector and the Sandusky Register with the help of BGSU Firelands College as a sponsor, as a public service. And we want to thank BGSU Firelands College for helping us produce this debate series. You can watch all of these debates on demand viewing at YouTube, the Register's YouTube channel, or at the Sandusky Register website, sanduskyregister.com. And we'll move on to our next question, which is a submitted question, I believe, and I think it is uh, Lynn Ann. How can you assist Firelands Forward, a workforce development cooperative, to further benefit her own county? And we'll start with you, Melissa James. You had mentioned Firelands Forward earlier. Um, how can you assist a workforce development cooperative, Firelands Forward, to further benefit here in county? Well, assisting them would be one thing, um, but I want to make sure that the $50,000 invested by here in county is coming back to services of all of here in county, not just Norwalk. Um, obviously, you know, I, I love Norwalk, that's fine, but we have a whole county that has to be dealt with. Um, I actually spoke with a person from our Job and Family Services over the weekend who does workforce development and asked her if they could have used the $50,000 for um, helping her program and, and she kind of had a heart attack that there's 50 grand that went elsewhere and not to the program she's working with, which she has people who can no longer be part of it because they've run out of funds. Um, so if Firelands can come in, but they're looking at a budget of $360,000 before they ever get started. I am concerned about where does that $50,000 come back in services to our county. Um, collaboration is great. There's also another um, group that is um, four counties, not just two. Um, and I, I think that we need to be looking at what is collaboration really going to come back um, 
and bring back to Huron County. Thank you for your answer, and Commissioner Boos. It's unfortunate that my opponent, who's you know a month ahead of going into the election, or actually our election starts tomorrow, doesn't know what she needs to know about Firelands Forward, and is putting out false information. Firelands Forward is a combination Huron County, Erie County. It's not Erie County, it's both. As a matter of fact, we have equal amount of people on the board, and we have the say. We just uh, hired a new director, and guess what his number one priority was? His number one priority is to get to know Huron County, to understand the culture so that he can serve Huron County. How can we insist, assist with him? Not complaining against them, not saying that the money's not a good investment, but working with them, which is what we need to do and what we do with all of our different boards, and we will continue to do that with this board. We're there for them. We're going to make sure that they do for Huron County what we think they need to do. Thank you, Commissioner Boos. And we'll move on to the next question from Lynn Ann Bukovich. Or Brandon Adia. Uh, another submitted question. Uh, this person's question is simple, they say. What makes you the better candidate for your Huron County? And we'll start with you, Commissioner Boos. Well, what makes, what makes me the better candidate is the experience I have. And not only the experience as a county commissioner and being able to work, you know, we've worked with the COVID situation now for six months. Um, you know, so my, we've worked it, my opponent hasn't. I have, I have the experience at all levels of government, so I know how they work. I know what townships do. I know what their finances are like. I had eight years at the state level. I've made plenty of connections down there, and a lot of them that we've used. I'm also on the County Commissioner's Association Board. That's the state board that deals with how do you uh, get the state and federal government to work with the county government, and, and how will that work? And I'm on three, three of their committees. So besides all the experience, I'm a hard worker, I'm very active, we're probably the most active Board of County Commissioners that we've ever had, and I'm proud of that, and that makes me the best candidate. Thank you, Commissioner Bruce. Melissa James. Uh, empathy, respect, dignity, that's how I'll treat the county residents, how I will treat other county elected officials. Um, you will never catch my attitude. Uh, I will work diligently for absolutely everyone and every business in that county. No one is going to outwork me. There are pluses and minuses to having been in government for a long time. Um, I have been in the private sector. I have not been in government. Um, I know how to get things done. I will get them done when I give you my word. There, there is not going to be a question about that getting done. I will listen. I had a great meeting with some folks in Bellevue the other day. I will listen. Even though our uh, positions and our opinions were, were opposite one another, we had a two and a half hour meeting. I had a great opportunity to listen to them and to hear their concerns, and I will continue to do that. But respect, compassion, empathy, and dignity you will get from me as your commissioner. Thank you, candidate James. And we'll move on to the next question. And this one goes to Lynn Ann Bukovich. Um, if elected, what specifically would you do to help local businesses and industry? And that one will go to you, candidate James. That's what I've done specifically for 16 years as the county chamber director. Um, it's connections, it's education, it's caring for both the business and the business owner and their employees. Uh, we ran a state-recognized, award-winning safety council. Um, that shows our compassion and my drive and desire to make sure that when your workers and that your family and friends go to work, they come home with all their fingers in place, with, with safety programs in place that, that keep them safe, whether it's a physical or a, like this in COVID, so that they've got the proper PPE, they've got proper safety equipment. Um, connecting those businesses to the programs that are out there, whether it's workforce development or grants, loans, um, getting to their other elected officials at higher levels, making sure that we can connect resources. That's what I've done. That's my strong point. 
and I will drive our businesses to, to improve themselves and to grow for the best of our ability. Thank you, candidate James. And the question goes to you, Commissioner Boos. If elected, what specifically would you do to help local businesses and industry? You know, as we talked about, what are three of the most important things to do as a commissioner? And working with business is one of those, and that's something we pride ourselves on. I think this is the third time I mentioned now that we're spending more of our COVID CARES Act money on businesses than any other county around us, and we did it before they did. And here's the other thing we did. We're helping the other cities and villages do it too. We produced the, um, the application, the contract, and those kind of things that they could use so that they can help their businesses too. It's all about all of us working together. And then, you know, we'll continue to do that. We've worked with the businesses all along. And then I'll come back to Firelands Forward. What a great opportunity. You know, Firelands Forward was started by businesses. And we're, we listen to what the businesses are saying. We're going to continue to listen. And we're going to work with them so they can get the best employees possible. Thank you, Commissioner. And with that, we'll move on to our next question, which goes to Brandon Adio. Uh, so this was alluded to earlier. A uh, lawsuit against Sharon County's transfer station is a financial liability upwards of about $1 million annually. If elected, will you seek to settle this lawsuit and tr streamline tr trash services countywide? Why or why not? And that goes to you, Commissioner Boos. Um, I wrote in when you said you were going to have a debate and said we did not talk about this lawsuit in a debate. Um, our prosecutor has warned us against it, has warned our candidate, any candidates against speaking about it, and that I will leave it go as a legal issue. Will you seek to streamline trash services countywide? Why or why not? I'm, I'm not sure I understand what streamline trash services mean, but we're always looking to do the best that we can at our landfill and, or not our landfill, our transfer station. Just remember, the bonds expire on that transfer station and is it time that we move on from a transfer station? That's a big task that needs to be taken on. And I know about trash, I know about landfills, I know about um, those types of things, and we'll continue to work on that. Well, the prosecutor didn't get a hold of me, so I'll talk about it. Um, you, do, you do realize you're risking the county by I'm, doing that. And I'm, I guess as a candidate, if you do that, that says what you're doing. I'm not risking anything. Yes, I will work to end that lawsuit. The money being spent is nearly $200,000 this year on legal fees. It's time to um, call everybody into the room and get it settled. Um, that that has got to stop. That legal suit, but all the others, the other outside consultations. It's time we learn to sit down and, and stop running lawsuits here and lawsuits there. What could we have done with that two hundred thousand dollars? What could we do with the forty-seven thousand that that was put into negotiations for the deputies' um, raise? That's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, nearly right there. That it's your tax money, and we could be doing services, improving services, and and opportunities right there. I'm not I'm not giving away anything on the county because it's it's hard to find any information about the lawsuit. But um, I would work diligently, it would be one of my first things, to try to get that thing shut down and, and stop with bleeding money on lawsuits. Thank you, Can uh, I get candidate James. Seconds? Please go ahead, Commissioner Boos. 30 seconds to that is, uh, I, she doesn't even know what the lawsuit is about, and she's ready to settle it. She doesn't know that we are, uh, we're in, you know, we're in a situation where, we don't need to settle because we think we're going to win. Oh, I got. I know about it. I've, I've got the definition. Just remember, you can't give That's details not, out. You can get this right off of the secretary's site, so I'm not giving out details. There's all sorts of what papers were filed when, what what was said, what I know about it. It's it's uh, the complaint of, was of um, a lack of performance initially on the transporter, um, and then. Uh, not giving enough notice of, of ending the, the contract. It went to the state Supreme Court, which does four free negotiations, and they could have come up with a settlement for free, 
services. They couldn't figure out how to settle the differences. I understand there are problems with how that was uh, She's way past her time. How that was conducted, but um, Finish up. it needs to be ended, and that's what I'll do. Thank you, candidate James. And did you want to respond real quick? No, I'm fine. All right, um, next question. Do either of you support developing a recycling program at the transfer station located at the Close County landfill? And we'll start with you, President James. There, there is currently some recycling being done, cardboard, uh, cans, things like that. But um, I think this was glass and... Uh, there's not a glass currently. Okay. Um, and part of the... It, that's a two-sided question. Yes, of course, uh, who doesn't support recycling? The question is, is, there finan is it financially um, viable because the market for recycles is not good and um, it's very, very low. Typically the cost of recycling is more than the payback. So um, it's, a, it's one of those good feel-good questions. Yes, it would be great to be green, reduce our carbon footprint, do those things, but at the same time you have to be fiscally responsible as to whether or not that's a viable program. And I, I believe in the current market, it is probably not. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Boose? Yes, we do do um, recycling out of the landfill of cardboard and plastics and uh, paper and those sorts of things. And, um, you know, it's more than a feel-good thing. It's more of a social responsibility. And we've lost money in a lot of those things for a long period of time. The question comes down to being more is, do we have, uh, how do we do the recycling? It's, you know, do we do it with bins that we have two places or three places around the county? We have bins that you can do recycling in. And it's also about, should you be able to do commingled recycling or does it have to be source separated? Those are all things that the Solid Waste District works on, which by the way, the Solid Waste District is more than just the commissioners. It's people from the townships, people from the cities, and we have to listen to all what they say, but yet still do it physically responsible. Thank you, Commissioner. And our next question is also a submitted question. This is our last question. I think so. All right. Uh, we seldom see any information directly from the commissioners. What steps would you be willing to take to make the actions and even the financial dealings of the commissioner more transparent? And we'll go with you, Commissioner Boose. Uh, excellent question. First thing we did as we became county commissioners, this group of commissioners has asked our auditor to put our checkbook online on the state online's website. And even though it took them two years, we finally got it done. Um, took a lot of pushing on our part. How much more transparent can you be than to put all of your expenditures online for everybody to see? It's a great system that the state treasurer has set up. It's easy to use, easy to filter, and a great way of doing it. Our minute, you know, we as far as open meetings, our meetings are all open, and you know, we always invite the reflector. They're there sometimes, sometimes they're not, but. We, you know, our meetings are open, uh, our minutes are open, and it, all you have to do is ask and check. You know, we can't, we put, we've uh, uh, made our website much better, so we're all about working and being open, and that's what we've done for the last three years. Thank you, Commissioner. And candidate James. Um, I, I would take exception that it that it's um, easy enough to be open. Uh, the, the bud, the... The checkbook is out there, but to be able to follow the budget, I think the average resident can't clearly can't can't com comfortably follow that budget. I think there needs to be conversation on the website from the commissioners after after a meeting, which by the way is at nine o'clock in the morning. So if you work, you can't go to. So I think the Thursday meetings, and I think there should be an every Thursday meeting, should be at night. I would push for a Thursday night meeting and an every Thursday meeting. Um, and welcome anybody, any resident, to come in to talk. You can get any document you want, as I did, 
um, if it's a public document, and most of them are, uh, but you have to know where to ask. I want people in at those meetings. I want the transparency. I want conversation going on that website, such as this is what we did in our meeting, this is what we're doing in the county, and, and uh, making sure that people have open access to our meetings, not making them either take time off work or find some other way to attend a meeting. Thank you, candidate James. With that, uh, I want to mention again that this has been the Huron County Commissioner's Debate brought to you by BGSU Firelands College as a public service. We want to thank BGSU Firelands College for helping us make this a reality. We're going to go to closing statements from each candidate now. And uh, this, this uh, debate will be available for demand viewing through the election. And with that, we're going to candidate James for your closing statement. Thanks. And thanks to the Register and the Reflector and, of course, BGSU for sponsoring this debate. I sincerely appreciate it. Um, campaigning has been kind of odd in this uh, uh, time, and, um, but it's been fun to find new ways. Um, I want to tell you, um, as a taxpayer in Huron County, if I'm your commissioner, you are welcome to see everything that we do. You will always have access to me. I will never treat you with disrespect. Um, I will always treat you with dignity. The transparency that is claimed now will be nothing compared to what I want to provide to our residents. Um, the service, the, the getting out into the communities versus you come to my office if you want to see me. If you come to my office, I'm hoping I'm not there because I'm going to be out in your communities. I want to know what you're doing. I want to know how to help you. I want to know how to bring the things to our community. We need to, to improve our mental health services. We need to improve our addiction services. We need to enhance those folks who are working there because they themselves are currently in this situation. They themselves, I'm concerned about their well-being because they are so stretched at dealing with what's going on in, in our, our county. Um, our, our, our seniors and veterans, we need to be able to work those two, can, those two organizations because most, a lot of them overlap. I think that we could find a good common ground for them. But bottom line, I will be yours. I will always be available and I appreciate your votes. Thank you very much, uh, candidate James. Uh, Commissioner Boos. Once again, thank you for uh, holding us and thank you for all the fair questions and a very good way of running us. It was very fair to everybody and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, what we have here today is two uh, different candidates at opposite sides. What I really like hearing from my opponent is she wants to do everything we've been doing. Everything she speaks about, we've been doing it already. All she wants to do is say, we're going to do the same things. And that's what we're doing. We're doing all those positive things. I don't know how much more transparent you can get than transparent. I don't know how more you can than putting the books online and letting people know. But you got two different candidates. You have one candidate who will tell you what she wants to do, but you don't have any proof to know that that's the way she acts or that's what she's going to do, as opposed to you have one candidate who has 20 years of experience in government. You know what I do. You know what I say I'll do, I'll do. You have proof of that. And, you know, you have one candidate, that is myself, that stands up for Republican values, and one candidate that stands up for Democratic values. You have a huge choice to make with two totally different candidates. Thank you, Commissioner Boos, and thank you, candidates, for participating in this debate brought to you by the Sandusky Register and the Norwalk Reflector, and our sponsor, BGSU Firelands College. Thank you, Aaron Caldwell, for producing this debate, and Brandon Adio and Lynn Vukovic for co-producing the debate. Remember, all five of our fall debates are available for demand viewing once they're completed at the Register's YouTube channel, <laughs> and at the Sandusky Register. All of our debates are socially distanced with masks. Thank you for being with us and stay tuned.